over yawn, you know, because a yawn's just this, isn't it? <sighs> but some people, they've got to go, <sighs> like you're going to go, great yawn, <laughs> love the strings of saliva. Right. And so... people who do the Twilight Zone music, when nothing strange has happened. <laughs> oh, we stayed at that hotel last summer too. Dee 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 dee. Mm. And people who do comedy police speak. You know, the doorbell goes, they go, expecting company, are we, sir? <laughs> and people who, when you phone them and go, hi, it's David here, go, hello, David here. <laughs> and people who, when they've told a funny anecdote, have to finish it by going, and I was like, ah! You know, and then the otter fell out the window. And I was like, ah! Right. I interesting you should choose the otter as an illustration. Why? Because Freud identifies the otter as a symbol of deep-seated antagonism. Take the name of your first pet, then add the name of the place where you were born. No. no listen, no, listen to me, no, no. listen, listen. And then you add the name of your favourite character from Star Trek. So, my porn star name would be Dingle Little Hampton Uhuru. <laughs> that doesn't sound anything like a porn star. It sounds like an unsuccessful member of the ANC. Lord Peter's <laughs> wrong. It's like your first pet and your mother's maiden name. That's right. So what's your porn star name? Charles Dickens. <laughs> Main a name is like Dickens. Right, and you had, what, a dog called Charles? <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, it was a terrapin. Hi. <laughs> hey, Kirsty, we're just talking about our first pets. Really? God, that's amazing. I was just dreaming about my first pet. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Jonathan here. Can't talk now, Jonathan here. Can I call you later? OK, bye. Listen, David, I'm going to go. OK. I shall be proceeding in a northerly direction. <laughs> oh, by the way, did I tell you my friend Jonathan, he's actually a mate of Sting's. And I was round at his house the other day, yeah, and the phone went and went, oh, yeah, I bet that's Sting, you know, taking the piss and that. He said, yeah. Actually, it was, and he's coming round. Thank you. See, can do it. Just a charming, interesting story with no bloody terrible mannerisms. <laughs> and I was like, ah! <laughs> She's great, Kirsty. I think, David, you may finally have found the one. Really? Because I was thinking of chucking her. Why? She's fabulous, all those adorable little mannerisms. Are you mental? <laughs> Let's just take one of those mannerisms, OK? That thing of telling an anecdote and then going, and I was like, ah! <laughs> when someone does that, what they're basically saying is, this is a really, really amazing anecdote. It must be, because look what my reaction was. <laughs> yeah, but it was amazing. That sting turned out to be her friend Jonathan's cousin. Ah! <laughs> Yeah. Uh. Oh, God, and her big yawning that she does. And you see, let me stop you there. You see, the thing is, David, is fundamentally you can't commit. So what you're doing is you're taking the innocuous habits of this charming young woman and magnifying... Let me stop you a... there. Do you expect me to listen to you going on about the subject of what is and isn't irritating when you're smoking a pipe? <laughs> I'm so sorry. You sometimes smoke. Yeah, but not a pipe. I've never done something equivalent to putting a large neon sign over my head saying, I am a twat. <laughs> How long have you been doing that? Some small while. I come from a long line of... Uh, Twats. <laughs> Pipemen. Lord Alphonse de Harrington, my great, 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 great grandfather. What was he like? He was great. <laughs> anyway, he always used to say that if only there'd been a stronger prevailing wind coming back from the colonies, it would have been him and not Sir Walter Bloody Raleigh who had the credit of introducing the Western world to the miraculous leaf tobacco. Mm. So your family just missed out on the credit for lung cancer, heart disease, and those little yellow burn marks you get in public toilets on top of the loo roll holders. <laughs>
<laughs> Mark, if you will, but in time you'll come to see that cigarettes are for boys. Pipes are for, uh, don't say twats. <laughs> Lord Peter's like right. About pipes. No, about that, he's like wrong, really like off the mark. Like, here's all right thinking people, and here's Lord Peter and his bagatti driving away from them, <laughs> smoking like a pipe. Point taken. No, it's about Kirsty. You shouldn't split up with her. I was once going out with this really great girl, and then I ended it just because of one little thing about her. Which was? She was a man. <laughs> How'd you find that out? Well, how do you think? On Jerry Springer. <laughs> you see, though, you, above all people, should beware the scars of non-commitment. You yourself have a son who is being brought up, mainly by his mother, in a stiflingly protective, over-feminine environment, which does seem to have led to him becoming a bit, uh, What? Nothing. Hmm. Maybe it is me. Maybe I have got a problem. You have to ask yourself, David. If you find Kirsty so... What are you doing going out with her? Well, the sex is great. Tell me about it. Sorry? <laughs> hey, Dave, my room is next to yours. I've been thinking of asking you for a rent rebate because of a combination of sleep deprivation and lowered self-esteem. <laughs> oh, come on, we're not that loud. You, like, are. Would you like me to tell Lord Peter what you were shouting over and over again last night? You mean, apart from... Cuppum, cuppum. <laughs> Don't be so... How do you know that? You live across the hallway. <laughs> It's amazing what you can hear when you put one of these against the wall. <laughs> well, it's all very well you looking smug, but if the tip of the pipe was in your ear, the bowl wouldn't actually touch the wall. Yes, that's true. But if you twist and crash your face against the wall, <laughs> you like this, and you ignore the tobacco falling out and burning you. Now, they don't want the fountain, they don't want the glass atrium, they definitely don't want the floor-to-ceiling windows. Because our contract is to design the toilets at Shannon Air. <laughs> yeah, okay, bye. <laughs> Ava, you don't have to do all that. I do. Every task I take all the way to the end zone. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, it is from this. Achieve your goals. Audio hypnotic suggestions towards a more motivated self. Isn't this... I know what you're going to say. Isn't this for corporate executives and high flyers, not for Slovenian illegal immigrant cleaning ladies? <laughs> Ava, what can this possibly teach you? Hmm? A more focused way of changing the Hoover bags, perhaps? Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> anyway, you don't have to clean individual pages of the books. I do. Have you seen your copy of Nancy Friday's My Secret Garden? <laughs> I have tried every cleanser on the market and still pages 37 and 38 are completely stuck together. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Hey, Sean. I just wanted to say thanks for letting me have membership to the club. Yeah, Ethan, don't get too excited. Demand for membership of Club Biscuit just about outstrips demand for rabbit giblets at the Linda McCartney Memorial Cafe. <laughs> well, it took you long enough. Only because you were blackballing me for two years after we split up. Me, the architect of this club. I was voting for you every time. It was the other members of the committee who couldn't forget about your revolving floor. That was a great design concept for your toilets. <laughs> David, so Michael's beige trousers are still not completely stain-free. <laughs> hi, Dad. Josh, hi. Baby, I've told you, you've got to stay upstairs in a flat at night. Oh, Shah, leave him alone. It's OK. I can't sleep. I've had that dream again. What dream? The one where I'm swimming at school with my friend Nick Wood. And he hasn't got any trunks. And I say, you can have my trunks. But Miss Lease, our PE teacher, says, no. And I say, he wants to give him my trunks. He looks so cold. You know, Josh, I think you're going to right. I'll take you up to bed. Don't worry. You've just had a nightmare. It's not a nightmare. I wake up and I'm really excited. <laughs> That's why I can't... Yes, well, <laughs> up the wooden hill to Bedfordshire. What are you doing? I'm so sorry. I thought we were in the smoking area. We are. But we're not in the twats area. <laughs> oh, very good. I think you'll find, Sean, that dwindling membership of this club might be reversed if it became known as a refuge for... Twats? Pipemen. How many, like, pipemen are there now? I mean, is it like pandas? Like, do you have to mate with a pipe woman? <laughs> and that's got to be kind of tough, because any woman who, like, smokes a pipe is, like, almost certainly a lesbian. Not 
always. She might be an old hag who smokes a pipe like Popeye smokes. <laughs> this sort of pipe, do you mean? A corn cob? <laughs> what is that? It's a pipe caddy. I got it from the pipeman's help meet in Chancery Lane. <laughs> While I was there, I purchased this selection of pipes. The Lovett, with its polished bowl and long shank. The Bulldog, a squat pipe, but by God it's loyal. <laughs> the Scotch Cutty, the Meerschaum, which Holmes almost certainly smoked, but we can't be sure. <laughs> do you know, just at this moment, I do feel a bit of a twat? <laughs> Hey, man. I still got 40 ab crunches left to do. Yeah, well, I got plans to finish. You know, work. Well, this is my work? No, it isn't. Your work involves standing around at the gym telling other people to do sit-ups. Billy Bunter could be a personal trainer. <laughs> Billy Bunter? Like the fat owl of the remove? With, like, Harry Jamset Ram Singh, the nabob of Bafnaber? Yes. <laughs> You know, Ethan, it is true. When I asked for the Yugoslavia team in 1980, our trainer was an 18-stone party official. He had to have a special crash mat converted out of a bouncy castle. But the thing is, man... Ethan, could you just get out of that position? I can't. I'm locked into my routine. If I stop now these 23 ab crunches I've already done, I may as well have just, like, pissed them up the wall. <laughs> for God's sake. You know, every morning the fat trainer would make us do the splits? on his face <laughs> and this music's just so 80s as well you know it makes me think of molly ringwald trilby blue neon wine bars with exposed brickwork thank you jackets with the sleeves rolled out <laughs> robotic dancing bass players who play their fretless basses like this <laughs> this music is not so 80s it's a happening dance track totally 21st century Hi. What's this news? Choice. Ava, where did you get that self-hypnosis tape? Can I help you? <laughs> yeah, uh, I was looking for a self-hypnosis tape. Oh, we've got them all here. Look at these. Change your duvet cover. <laughs> Listen to that, you'll have it down to 17 seconds. Hmm. <laughs> Eat liver and like it. I never have anything else now, even overcooked. Have you got one called Find Your Girlfriend Not Irritating? <laughs> We've got Find Your Tortoise. Well, not irritating, because it doesn't hibernate properly. <laughs> no, it's just called Find Your Tortoise, in case you've lost it. Oh. Look in the garden. <laughs> there it is. Oh no, that's just a German helmet. <laughs> Not really what I was after. Well, you could make your own. Lots of people do that nowadays. Really? Oh yes. Never underestimate the power of the human mind. I mean, on my telly, I can't get Channel 5. But I can get it in my head. <laughs> They're trailing tonight's soft porn film. Found it. What? My old tape recorder. Oh, I did some stuff on this. Me and my mate Chris, right, we did this tape where we pretended to be DJs and just kind of said some rude words and giggled a lot and did some silly voices and then I think he farted into the microphone. Chris who? Evans, his name was. <laughs> Me and my sister did a whole episode of Hawaii Five-O, doing all the voices. Jack Lord. <laughs> Didn't he get Alzheimer's? Yeah. So by the end of his career, he was like, book him. <laughs> Do you know, when I was nine years old, I actually made my own documentary investigating the relationship between kleptomania and illegitimacy. I called it Thieving Bastard. <laughs> What are you looking for? Just some old tapes. There's got to be some around here somewhere. Well, I'm just off down the shops for a pouch of tobacco. I'll get you a C90. Oh, sod that. I'm not breaking one of life's most basic laws. What law? You get to a certain age and you're not allowed to buy any more new blank tapes or blank videos. <laughs> you know, you just have to record over the ones you've already got. Even pre-recorded ones, you have to put a little bit of tape over that little hole <laughs> on the top of the tape. I don't know what this one is, though. And so here we are. 
There's a big crowd here. It's a lovely day. It's Josh. The so kids do still play with tape recorders. Yeah. yeah, what's he doing? Commentating yeah. or something? What is it? Football? The Ryder Cup? And as the bridal pulls up, the Duchess of Wessex is looking absolutely stunning. With what appear to be, yes, 1,000 Elizabeth Emmanuel sequins, hand sewn in like glittering diamonds. Well, there's got to be some yeah. Good afternoon, Mr. Jarbash. I wonder, do you stock black shag? I don't think so. But if you look on the shelf, we definitely have Asian babes. Well, Mr. Jarbash, you misunderstand. Um, what about Brown Twist? Try the internet. www.steaminghotdinner.com I might, actually. But I know what you must have. A really good, solid fistful of old Parsons pleasure. Out! <laughs> Go on! Out! Just relax. Relax. And think of your girlfriend, Kirsty. And I was like, totally, ah! You're like, ah! Yeah, I was really like, ah! Oh, that's brilliant! <laughs> You're like in the tradition of great British comedy, like on the buses, like I'll get you, Butler. Uh, excuse me, sir, is this your vehicle? Is this your vehicle? <laughs> that's great. Uh, sorry, David, did you say that's great? Surely you mean that great? Ooh. Uh, you haven't you haven't done that before. What? That ooh thing. That's not one of your usual. I suppose I could edit the tape, get it on for tonight. <laughs> hey Sean, how's your membership drive going? Oh, please. I haven't heard such a misuse of the word drive since David tried to put it after the words my and sex. Well, maybe you should stage some kind of publicity event. Actually, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> Congratulate me. Why? because you're looking at a nominee for the Pipe Smoker of the Year Award. And on the bus's head like Olive, and she was always hitting on her old man Arthur, and Blakey, he was like Hitler. In what sense? He had a small tash. <laughs> yeah, hello, did anybody hear what I just said? Yeah, Pete, if you win, we'll throw a big party, all right, anyway. Well, that's just typical, isn't it? A fantastically important event, and nobody's interested. Why, the Pipe Smokers Guild can't even find a venue for this year's Pipe Smoker of the Year Award. Hey, we were just talking about some kind of event we could stage here at the club. Dee 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 That's great, like the Twilight Zone is brilliant. Yeah, when the idea of an event came up, I was thinking, you know, dot com awards, maybe an indie film premiere, not twat of the year. Well, you need the publicity and it'll be very well covered. Where? Pipes and Pipemen, The Briar, Pipe and Pouch, Pipe by Pipe, and Pipe! With an exclamation mark at the end. Peter, how can I put this? Club Biscuit will host Pipe Smoker of the Year, a rotting, maggot-seething corpse. And the Pipe Smokers Guild can pay up to £10,000 for hire of the venue. This event, above all, proves that, despite what cynics may think, people still love pipes. <laughs> and the nominations for the pipe man who will carry off this magnificent and coveted golden meerschaum are Lord Peter Harrington, Peter Harrington began smoking pipes earlier this year, and already he has developed into a complete and utter pipeman. His favorite pipe is the Love It, although he does confess a soft spot for the bent. <laughs> the pipe, that is. His favorite pipe-smoking hero is dictator and mass murderer Joseph Stalin, and his motto is... I don't care what Rennie Magritte says, this is a pipe. <laughs> and the winner is... Lord Peter Harrington. Well, sir, I advise you to avail yourself of one of the many forms of public transport available to the discerning commuter. Discerning commuter, brilliant. Oh, Kirsty, you really are fantastic. I love being with you. Would you like to dance? <laughs> hey, Dad. You want to be careful asking your lady that. Remember, she's a wicked dancer. Oh, not really. <laughs> you are? 
Do that dance routine thing you did the other day. It's wild. Well, okay, but only if you put that music on again. You got it. <laughs> oh, congratulations, Peach. I can't believe it. Ah! Oh! A DLT. Oh! <laughs> By the way, Pete, something I've noticed, you know, what? You hold the pipe, you chew the pipe, you spend a lot of time pointing the stem, but I've never actually seen you smoking it. <laughs> you can't just smoke a pipe. It's a whole complex series of, of, of pipe manoeuvres. You have to warm the bowl, clamp it down, wipe off any surplus ash. No, you don't, here. I, I, I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hey, don't worry. I present the very wonderful Kirsty! So, uh, did you have a piece of this tape then? Huh? No, I found it in your bedroom. What was it doing there? Relax. Think of your girlfriend, Kirsty. <laughs> She's not irritating. <laughs> Singing the Twilight Zone music. That's good. Pretending to be a comedy policeman. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Hooray. I'm like, uh, after every bloody anecdote is all right. And especially her robotic dancing is not in any way utter, utter shite. <laughs> Kirsty. And while we're here, you're not at all bothered about the fact that your son is clearly growing up to be a raving. <laughs> so, are you still seeing her? No. And anyway, they won't let me in Tetric Hospital. <laughs> I'm interested in the pipe smoking of your friend Peter. I think it may represent an oral fixation. Well, he's got through his initial nausea. He's completely addicted to it now. Well, that can't be a problem, can it? For the pipe smoker of the year? Mm, yes, it can. The thing is that... Pete told me that he actually has been comforting Kirsty, and um, they got quite close, and yesterday he told me he tried to kiss her. And? Well, just as their lips were about to touch, she turned away to be sick. Ah, <laughs> she didn't want a mouthful of old Parsons' pleasure. No. <laughs> How's he going to get round that problem? You hate pipes. <laughs> they make you smell. <laughs> pipes are for twats. <laughs> 